On face coverings, as I mentioned in my uh, comments, uh, Dominic, uh, it's an it's a England measure. Uh, we're speaking to the devolved administrations. Um, they can decide whether they uh, feel it's the right time for them to uh, uh, do the same um, thing. They may well decide to do that, but it is their call. You raise, of course, the interesting point of what happens on you know, those, those trains which cross um, borders. Um, and, and the answer is it would be uh, that you would need to be wearing it in England. That's absolutely true. Um, and uh, it will be up to Scotland or where trains cross uh, to Wales, uh, Wales to uh, provide uh, their own uh, guidance. Usually what happens, I can say, having been through this process in quite a lot of different ways over quite a long period of time with this coronavirus, is you end up finding that actually after some discussion, uh, typically the nations decide to uh, move together uh, at roughly the same time on, on these things, or at least a few days uh, apart. So I don't think it will turn out to be um, terribly uh, confusing. Uh, but we have a devolved uh, set up in, in this country with four nations who quite rightly can follow uh, their own uh, rules, and that's the way um, things therefore uh, operate. I don't know if there's anything useful you can offer to this, Peter, because Peter says he's the, the chair of Network Rail, so then there's a national aspect to this. So, um, I mean, I, I, our discussions with both uh, the staff and our expectations of passengers probably don't vary. We should, of course, respect the, uh, the, the sovereignty of the different uh, nations, but I, I would expect people who board a train in England to be wearing a mask when they go in the station and, and on the train. Uh, and I would expect the passengers to be wearing it when they got off, wherever they were. And that would be just sensible and it would be protective of both them and other people and courteous too.